everybody welcome back to my channel as you can see from the title today's video is all about the basics of law firm applications so when I first started university I literally had no idea anything about law firm applications I didn't know anything about the process I didn't really know anything about the different types of law firms and I found it all very overwhelming when I first started university because it was like a whole new world for me first time living away from home different way of being taught, a whole new level of independence and then also starting to think about applying for possibly my future job was all very crazy and I didn't know why I needed to start thinking about it so early. There are a few different misconceptions that I'm also going to go through in this video to try and maybe calm some of you down who are thinking some of the same things that I did and feeling a little bit overwhelmed. So I'm going to go through all of those but hopefully this should help some of you out. Um, I wish that I had a video that I could have just watched but I'm also going to tell you how I kind of figured it out and also my own experience so if you look a few videos down I did get offered a training contract um, last month with my favourite firm I it, this was during my second year at university and I'm just about to go into my third year but again as I go through this video you will see that you don't have to apply during your second year, you don't even have to apply during your third year, there's different routes that you can go into, there's different things that you can do and you can still become a lawyer and a solicitor eventually. So this is more for the solicitor route, so if you're wanting to be a barrister, this isn't the video for you. Um, this is specifically to become a trainee solicitor at a law firm and there are also different types of law firms, so there's also high street firms where I don't think the process will be like this but this is for bigger firms perhaps like city firms in London I'm applied to and will be working at a firm in Birmingham and it's an international firm called Evershed Sutherland but there are also some that are just national but it tends to be the bigger corporate kind of focus firms when there is corporate and commercial focus firms when there is this more of a focus on such a long application so I'm going to kind of explain it all to you and go through it so I hope you find this useful please give this video a thumbs up if you do and press the subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll get into it so first things first which is something that I was really confused about was the different types of law firms I kind of started university and I started hearing some of the friends that I made talking about magic circle firms, silver circle firms, city firms and I was very confused about which was which. So a magic circle firm is some of the biggest firms in London pretty much like Clifford Chance for example and they're kind of very very high wages but also a lot of work and it's all kind of things that you need to think about when you apply to law firms check out my firm research video if you want to know a little bit more about what I looked into when I chose which law firm I wanted to apply to but yeah magic circle didn't really suit me I don't want to work in London and I also didn't want the intense working hours that tends to come along with the magic circle firm so I kind of steered away from those silver circle similar but a little bit less maybe a little bit smaller firms and then there's international I'm going to an international firm so they have offices Birmingham London across the UK and then they've also got offices in loads of different countries as well so you get to be exposed to work from different countries and work with people from different countries so if that's something you're interested in definitely international firm would be for you then there's also national firms so they're just based within the UK so they're a little bit smaller but you still get a lot of work but it will just be UK work and then there are also other types of firms including high street firms which will just be a little bit smaller so I did some work experience at a firm called David Bunn which is a conveyancing firm so they're just focused on um, like sales of homes, leases and they also did wills and that was just like a small group I think they had about four offices around Birmingham so yeah you, you can work you might have done work experience in a smaller firm like that and then you can go straight up to the massive big boys so there's lots of different types so that's something to think about so for these different types of firms that i just went through they have lots of different practice areas um so for example the firm that i've applied to they have real estate employment law banking law different litigation which is a little, a little bit more argumentative like a litigation seats um commercial corporate 
um, they do tech law, absolutely loads of different types and a lot of these different firms will. So there's something called a training contract which is what you need to do to become a lawyer pretty much, a solicitor in one of these firms and a training contract is two years long. So a lot of these applications and the application process tends to be for a training contract and you have to apply about two years in advance for pretty much all of the firms that I applied to and I only applied to two but a lot of other firms I looked into you need to apply for two years in advance but for example one firm that I did like the look of um, but didn't end up going for because it was in London called Herbert Smith Freehills you needed to apply three years in advance so it's a big thing and you have to do it in advance which is why people apply so early but there are also vacation schemes which is what I applied to. So a vacation scheme is normally two weeks, mine was only a week because it was online, but it is some work experience that you can do in the firm during your summer holidays. And sometimes a few firms also have a winter vacation scheme. So you can also do the same thing during the winter. And this gives you a chance to um, discover the firm. The application, again, is pretty much exactly the same as for the training contract. And a lot of firms hire from that vacation scheme. Some firms don't even do a training contract application at all. They only do the vacation scheme. They only hire you from that vacation scheme because you're getting assessed throughout that whole week or two of experience. And then some firms, they hire pretty much like 80% of people from vacation schemes. So for me, I just decided that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do a vacation scheme application rather than a straight training contract application. So one of the misconceptions that I was referring to earlier on and I have talked about a little bit is that I think people think that you need to apply whilst at uni and it was something I was really worried about was that it's really difficult to get a training contract. It's really difficult to get through to the vacation scheme as it is. A lot of people it takes quite a bit of time to get onto one and then also to get off with a training contract as well. It, it's really difficult to do, it's really, really competitive. And if I hadn't have gotten one, because I was in my um, was in my second year and I was applying for the training contract that starts in 2023, if I hadn't have gotten one, I would have had to apply again the year later, which meant after my LPC, so you do three years at uni and then one year in the LPC, I would have had to have a year out before I could start a training contract. If I got rejected the year after, I would have had to have another year out. And that really, really scared me. And I was like, what would I possibly do with that amount of time? Like, that's really stressful. I have to get one. That's really not the case. And we weren't told about this at my uni. And it was only when I started to network and meet people from the firm I wanted to apply to that a lot of them said they'd applied two, three, four times and they hadn't got one and they became a paralegal there and they continue to apply each year as a paralegal. So you can go through as a paralegal at that firm to then have a training contract. A paralegal, the application process isn't as harsh, but it isn't a training contract. So a training contract is where obviously you're training to become a solicitor and you tend to have four seats, it's over two years. You have four seats in the different practice areas that you can choose from or they put you in that I mentioned earlier on. So you might have six months in real estate, six months in banking, six months in corporate, six months in commercial, for example. And you get to see them all and then you specialise in one. Whereas a paralegal, you're just getting given. Maybe I don't know lots about a paralegal's role, but it could be more like a legal secretary role. I think they do get a lot of responsibility and they do get a lot of the same work as trainees but they're not training to become a solicitor. They're just kind of getting the work. It is frustrating really because I think they do a lot of the same work, but that's just the way that it works. A paralegal is different. And I think you do have a lower wage and you're kind of, but you are still getting a lot of experience. So a lot of people go from being a paralegal to then becoming a trainee. And I think they find it a lot easier actually because they've already had all of that experience already worked in a law firm, already done a lot of the same kind of work. So if I hadn't have got, I'm being very vocal with my hands, I'm really sorry. But if I hadn't have got a training contract, I would have just tried to find a job as a paralegal and continued to apply each year. So you can only do 
the application process once a year for each firm. Some people apply to like six, seven, eight firms. For me personally, and I would recommend this to people, is to really be in love with the firm. And I personally don't feel like you can be in love with that many. For me, it was, I really, really love this firm. So I applied to my favourite firm. And then I applied to one other firm that I got through to the final um, part of the application, which was the final interview. And then I got rejected there. But I didn't mind because they weren't my favourite firm, but it was a firm I had um, visited um, during my first year at uni. And I did really, really like them, but not as much as the one that I've got a training contract for. But yeah, I still felt passionate about that one. You only get to apply to them once a year. So that means it can take a few years. And, that, and a lot of people that I met also on the vacation scheme or people along the way that I met had said, yeah, this is my third time applying to law firms this is my fourth year applying and I, I I think it is disheartening and it's really really hard work but you do get aware you're meant to be eventually but it's just kind of showing that there are a lot of people like me on YouTube and Instagram who have got training contracts earlier on and I think that puts a lot of pressure on people and I definitely felt that pressure as well seeing other people doing it and obviously LinkedIn is the place where you see everyone saying they've got a training contract and it's quite intense but you don't need to put that much pressure on yourself because a lot of the lawyers that you will meet at your dream firm it would have taken them years and they probably would have been a paralegal first so it's just a few little misconceptions or things that people think they need to achieve which you don't really need to but if you see so if you don't want to apply and you're feeling too much pressure don't just wait and do it when you want to it's a lot to do alongside your degree in my second year was really really hard <laughs> to do it all um applications and exams it was an intense year but a lot of people do it but then a lot of people don't so don't worry about it but that is kind of the overall process and then in terms of the applications there is a written application for all of them first. Sometimes there's a Watson and Glazer test, which I will do a video about in the future. And also there's a few videos like by Lucy Does Law. And I also have an Instagram post on my Instagram called Study Life Home, all about the Watson and Glazer test. I only had to do one of those for one of my firms, not the other one. I had a video interview for one of the firms, but not the other. Um, then it was an assessment centre. And then it was an interview and then some firms like one of my best friends um she did an application for a firm and she had like three other elements to her application like another exam and stuff and it was really intense but that's another thing all firms have different application processes and i don't think one will be the same so that's something else you'll find out along the way as well so there's a lot of advice videos a lot of Instagram accounts that you can follow that will really help you and I would recommend not trying to toot my own horn, horn at all but to try and follow some Instagram pages like my own and there's loads out there um, from your students who are going through the process or have gone through the process because it can really help you see it and if you follow a few you'll be able to see how it's different for other people and it definitely helped me along the way by setting up my legal Instagram really helped me understand the whole process because I was very confused by it so I'd recommend doing that if you are still feeling a little bit lost but I hope this helped I know I've like really rambled through it really quickly but I hope this has helped in terms of the basics of the different types of law firms kind of why you need why you might want to apply a little bit earlier and the process in terms of vacation schemes and training contracts I hope that this helps you out a little bit and I'll be doing some more specific ones again in the future. But yeah, if you don't already, check out my Instagram at Study Life Home. I've also done some like images where I've broken down the different stages and kind of um, defined a few different things as well that might help you out about the application process. So give those a little look at as well if you want some help. But yeah, good luck and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.